Hello, and welcome to the third vodcast for general physics. In this vodcast, we're going to focus on word problems that deal with constant velocity. So far in this class, we've talked about the fact that we can solve problems multiple ways. We could use graphs, we could use algebra, we can use motion maps. And we've really focused on the graphs and motion maps at this point. So now that we're focusing on word problems, we're going to see that algebra comes into play a lot more. And so for algebra, again, we're going to be using the equation that we derived um, in the first vodcast, delta x equals v delta t. So if we look at the constant velocity word problems, the first one we start with is a moving driver not anticipating an accident can apply the brakes fully in about 0.5 seconds. How far would a car driving down the freeway at 30 meters per second travel in this time? There are a lot of things that this problem is trying to tell you. In chemistry class, you guys would do things like circle important pieces of information and maybe underline th what you wanted to know. That works okay in physics class, but our problems are going to become complicated very, very soon. And so circling and underlying will become a little bit confusing. So instead, we're going to create what's called a knowns table. And we're going to explicitly write out what the problem tells us. So the problem tells us that our change in time is going to be 0.5 seconds. It also tells us that our average velocity is 30 meters per second. And then it asks us how far we will move so what we're trying to solve for is that delta x. Now there are lots of ways that we could solve this problem. For example, we could create a position versus time graph and we could draw the slope as 30 uh, meters per second because we know that that slope of a position time graph is equal to the velocity. And then we would find where 0.5 was in the time and we would read up and then we would read over and we would read what our answer was. And we definitely could do that. That is a valid problem solving strategy. It might take us a little bit of time. And so generally a faster way to solve this kind of a problem would be to use algebra. So delta x equals v delta t. If we fill in what we know, we know that the velocity is 30 meters per second, and we know that the time is 0.5 seconds. And so, just that, 30 times 0.5, we now know that our answer is going to be 15 meters. Let's do another problem. The three-toed sloth is the slowest land mammal. On the ground, the sloth moves at an average speed of 0.23 meters per second. The cheetah is the fastest land mammal. The cheetah is capable of speeds up to 31 meters per second for brief periods. So if a cheetah was to run at top speed for three seconds, how far would it travel? So let's pull out the knowns. And we're going to only have the knowns for the cheetah. So we know that the cheetah can run at a velocity of 31 meters per second. And we know that it can move at that speed for three seconds. And now we want to know how far this cheetah is going to go. So our delta x is going to be a question mark. And probably the fastest way to solve this problem is going to be algebra. So delta x equals v delta t. Our velocity is 31 meters per second. Our time is three seconds. So if we multiply those two things together, we see that that cheetah is going to run 93 meters. Now in part B, I want to know how long it would take for the sloth to run this same distance. So let's create another knowns table, and now we'll use, oh, we'll, sorry, we'll populate that knowns table with everything we know about that sloth. So we know that that sloth moves at 0.23 meters per second. Um, we now know that that sloth is going to run the same distance as the cheetah, so it's going to go 93 meters. And we are interested in knowing what that time is going to be. So I think the fastest way to solve this, again, might be algebra. So we can fill in everything we know. 93 meters equals 0 0.23 meters per second multiplied by time. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 0.23. 
in order to solve for time. And then we find that the time it takes the sloth to run 93 meters is 404 seconds. That is a lot longer. Think about it. That cheetah went that distance in three seconds, and man, this sloth has taken 404. That's a big difference. Let's look at exercise six. Exercise six is going to be a little bit different. Uh, here we're looking at a car on a highway. It's driven 80 kilometers during the first hour of travel, 50 kilometers during the next half hour, and 40 kilometers during the final half hour. What is the car's average speed for the entire trip? Now, I'm asking you for an average speed. And you guys have seen average before. You're very used to the math definition of average, which would be something like, um, you know, x plus y plus z divided by the number that, of items that you have. So since we would have 3, it would be x plus y plus z divided by 3. It could be m plus n plus o plus q, and this one would be divided by 4, since there's 4 of them. And we would call this a mathematical average. So you might take all of those three individual velocities, add them all up, divide by three. You, unfortunately, would get the incorrect answer if you took a mathematical average. Okay? In physics class, a mathematical average won't work because it's assuming that you are moving at that velocity for the same amount of time every time, and that's just not true. So for physics class, it might be easiest to think about this in terms of a position versus time graph. Um, we know that for the first one hour of travel, we go 80 kilometers. And then the next half hour, we went another 50. So we would now be at 130 kilometers. Ooh, here, we'll start drawing this line. And then in the last half hour, so our T is at 2, um, we would go another 40 kilometers. So now we're at 170 kilometers. This problem is really asking you, instead of having these three discrete line segments, what if we had just the beginning and the end and we connected them via one line segment? What would the slope of that line segment be? That's really what average velocity is asking you. So when we think about average velocity and how, how do we calculate it, there are two things that you need to know. Okay, you need the total displacement and you need the total time. So if we think about the total displacement, we went 80 meters, then 50 meters, then 40 meters, so 80 meters plus 50 meters. Oh, sorry, this is kilometers, isn't it? Kilometers plus 40 kilometers. So we want a total of 170 kilometers. And if we think about the time, we want one hour plus 0.5 hours plus 0.5 hours. We traveled for a total of two hours. When I use delta x equals v delta t, I'm going to use my total displacement as my delta x. I'm going to use my total time as my delta t. So 170 kilometers equals v times 2 hours. So if we divide both sides by 2, we end up getting that the average velocity is 85 kilometers per hour. This is something that's very important in, for average velocity because it'll trip a lot of people up. People really want to use a mathematical average, and it just doesn't work. Again, because a mathematical average assumes that you are moving at that speed at, for the equal amounts of time. And as we can see, we move 
um, at the first speed for twice as long as the second and the third speed. So the last one, um, you're approached by American Ninja Warrior. They propose that you compete in a 100 meter dash with Carl Lewis. For those of you who don't know, Carl Lewis was a very, very successful um, Olympic track and field athlete in the 80s. You should watch stuff about him. He's great. Um, but to make the race more interesting, you're going to get a 20 meter head start. Your best time in the 100 meter is 14.2 seconds. And Carl, again, who competed in the 80s, um, he's not in top form now. He can run it in 11.1 .1 seconds. Determine who crosses the finish line first. Much like all these other problems, we're going to make a knowns table, but we now have two people. We got you, and we got Carl. So we're going to have to have two knowns tables. You know that in this race, you are going to go 80 meters, right? We know that Carl is going to go 100 meters. What else do we know? Well, we know that Carl can do 100 meters in 11.1 .1 seconds. How fast can you run 80 meters? Well, we don't really know because we're not told your velocity and we're not told how fast you're going to run those 80 meters. So we don't really know. Instead, we're told a bunch of information about you that relates to when you can, what you can do when you run 100 meters. So you know that if you go 100 meters, it'll take you 14.2 seconds. Could we then find your velocity? And if we find your velocity, could we then use it for your 80 meter race and figure out what your time is going to be in that 80 meters? I think so. So let's do that. So we'll use algebra. We'll use delta x equals v delta t. And we've got 100 meters equals whatever your velocity is times 14.2 seconds. So if we divide both sides by 14.2, we end up getting that your velocity is going to be um, 7.04 meters per second. So now, if we go back to your race against Carl, in your race against Carl, you are going to go 80 meters, and you will run it at 7.404 meters per second. And let's see if we can find out what that change in time is going to be. Is it greater than 11.01, .01 or is it less than 11.01? .01? Bummer. 11.36. So you can run this race in 11.36 seconds, but since 11.36 seconds is greater than Carl Lewis's 11.1 .1 seconds, you, unfortunately, will lose this race. Maybe you just need to hit the track a little more often. All right. Good luck with those word problems.